Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting this winter building scene. It was really relaxing to paint this one because it's one of those simple paintings. So I hope you guys enjoy the style of painting as well. I'm not sure if you guys noticed from the intro, but I painted this on a new sketchbook because I feel like I'm done with this old square sketchbook even though I still have some single pages left. I just feel like I mostly filled them all. And since I really like painting on the square format, I decided to buy a new one. When I ordered this new sketchbook, I just saw that it was square, it has watercolor paper, and I like the color of the cover so I just bought it without looking at the size and it turned out to be quite small compared to my old sketchbook but personally I don't mind since I quite like painting a smaller scale if however you guys prefer the larger format you can actually enlarge the outlines that you get on Kofi because they're set in 300 dpi which is a high enough resolution for you to enlarge the scale. So this sketchbook is by Potentate and it has hot pressed paper. I've never actually used the paper before so this will be my first painting. And I'm going to skip this first page since the size is a little bit smaller so I'll be skipping to the next spread. So let's begin to sketch. I've seen a lot of winter scenes like this one online so I decided to make my own version. I started by drawing out the snowy sidewalk and the road and I'm going to leave a bit of space for the car and most of the top area for the buildings which I'm just going to draw out lines to figure out the height at this point. I personally sketched out a smaller version in my sketchbook just to get an idea of the elements that I wanted to include in this composition so it was much easier to space it out especially on this smaller sketchbook. I want these to be European buildings and I always find that they have really fun roofs so you can play around with that. Since I'm including three buildings I don't want it to look too static and symmetrical so I played a bit with the height and I also decided to add an attic on the side for the building at the center instead of putting the attic in the middle because this helps with the asymmetrical feeling which I find gives a bit more movement and dynamic to the composition. After adding on the main structure of the buildings, I start to add other elements. I drew out the pine trees on the side very very lightly because technically I don't have to draw it out but I feel like I'll forget so that's just to remind myself to paint it on later. I also added a bench, street light and also a tree on the left or tree branches. Here I decided to move the fence to the back because all of the elements were just too aligned with each other so by moving it further back I find that this adds more depth to the composition. I'm also going to add a simple car on the road here since the scale is quite small I'm not going to worry about the details. I feel like I've added enough elements here for the composition so I'm going to start adding on some details like some chimneys on the roofs of the building. After looking at the composition again, I felt like the car looks a bit too small compared to the buildings so I decided to just redraw it again but in a larger scale. Then after enlarging the car, I felt like the bench was also a bit too small, so here I'm also going to redraw a larger version. Once I'm finally happy with the scale, then I'm going to move on to add the details for the buildings. I'm just going to add the door and also windows. While I'm drawing out the windows, I like to also play around with the frame of the windows. So. For the top, I added an arch and for this one, I made larger windows. You can also create different shapes as well. And I also separated the floors or the levels of the building with some lines. 
front I'm going to add some bushes as little details just like the trees in the background is not necessary to actually draw this out but I feel like I'll forget so I just sketched it very lightly and lastly I'm going to add some smoke lines to the chimneys next here are the colors that I'll be using for this painting firstly this is vermilion by Holbein Jean Brilliant by Holbein New Gamboge by Daniel Smith Graphite Grey by Daniel Smith Paints Grey Bluish by Schmincke and Bleedproof White by Dr. Paige Martins Let's begin to paint. I'm going to first use a really thin consistency of Paints Grey Bluish to paint the sky and I'm going to work per section since this area is divided by the smoke of the chimneys I like to make the sky a little bit textured and uneven so sometimes I like to place the color in one side and then just add paper to pull the rest so some areas might have more pigment than others and for some of the larger areas of the smoke I like to also use a bit of paint to cut through those denser or thicker areas and make them look a bit more flowy. As for the edges of the sky, I like to keep them uneven to give a looser look. For the right hand side here, I first painted the top part of the sky and I'm going to be very careful as I'm getting closer to the street light because I want to avoid that area. And I also painted using a thinner consistency because I'm going to follow this up while the surface is still damp with a medium consistency of new gamboge to paint the street light and this time I'm spreading out the new gamboge outside of the area of the street light to make it look like it's glowing. The surface of the paper should more or less be dry now so I'm going to start painting on the trees in the background using the same color as the sky. This time I'm using a medium consistency though so the value is a little bit darker and I started with the tip then as I slowly get to the mid point and the bottom I just use a clean damp brush to pull the paint further so the bottom becomes much lighter and a little bit misty. While I was pulling the paint I also tried to avoid the yellow glowy area of the street lamp then here I used a thicker consistency of the same color to paint another tree in front of the one that I previously painted using the same method as before but because I am using a thicker consistency this time the tree will look like it's closer to our view. And while I'm still painting on that area, I decided to increase the saturation of the lamp as well as the glow using New Gamboge. I'm going to leave the trees to dry and move back to painting the sky on the left side this time using a thin consistency of Paints Grey Bluish. I'm using the same method by using a thin to medium consistency around the edges to make sure they're nice and clean. Then I just pull the paint further outwards using a clean damp brush. While the surface is still a little bit damp, I added graphite grey to the paints grey bluish and I'm using a thin consistency still to paint some trees. Since the surface is still a little bit damp, the colors will just bloom out naturally and this will give the misty effect. And just like the previous trees, I want the top part to be a little bit darker in value. And that's it for now for the background. I'm going to move on to paint the snow or the shadow of the snow since the snow itself is white. And I'm just using a very thin consistency of graphite gray. I'm directing my brush horizontally here because I want the surface to lie flat and those pile of snow doesn't look too high up. By directing the brush horizontally, it helps to keep that flat surface. And while I'm doing that, I'm also wiggling my brush ever so slightly to give an uneven surface. After I'm done, I just use a clean damp brush to soften some of the edges and this will create a little bit of variation where some shadows will be softer than the others. The background should be completely dry now, so I'm going to paint on the tree in front using a mix of graphite grey and paints grey bluish in a medium consistency and a dry brush load. I just tapped using the tip of my brush to suggest some leaf textures and make sure that those clumps of leaves look quite sparse for now. Here I'm mixing the first color of the building using Jean Brilliant, Vermilion and a little bit of Paints Grey Bluish to mute the color slightly. And I'm going to use a medium to thin consistency to paint the exterior of the building while avoiding the windows as well as the door and the other features. 
Let's move on to the next building. I use John Brilliant and I accidentally pick up some of the previous peachy mixture as well. Then this time I added new gamboge and also a bit of the grey mixture from earlier to mute the colour slightly. I first use a medium consistency to paint the bottom section of the house at the centre. Then I'm going to pick up more of the grey mixture but this time I'm using a lighter consistency to paint the rest of the exterior. For the last one, I want the color to be muddy and brown so I just used the previous color mixtures with a little bit of the light grey and this time I added more vermilion to make the brown a bit more richer and more of a reddish brown but just like before, I'm using a light consistency to paint the exterior. By the way, these buildings tend to be quite colourful so feel free to play around with your favourite hues as well. Let's move on to the roof. Here I'm using a light consistency of graphite grey and while I was painting this I forgot that I want to leave out some white negative space for some snow but I'll just go back over it again using bleed proof white so it doesn't really matter and for the chimney I just used the same colour as the building. For the roof of the left building I just used the same colour mixture as the building on the right. So I'm just recycling colors that I've already pre-mixed on my palette. This time I'm using a slightly thicker consistency than the building itself. Then I'm also going to use the same mixture for the last building but I added more vermilion so the color of the roof this time is a bit more vibrant. Since I still have a lot of that color, I'm just going to use it to paint the chimney on the left building and for the building on the right, I'm just going to use a bit of graphite gray. For the tiny stairs, I just used the light yellow brown and I'm using a very thin consistency because I want it to look sort of like off-white. Next, I'm going to be painting the doors just like the building itself. You can pick any hue. For the first one, I used a mix of New Gamboge and Paints Grey Bluish for this green. As for the second one, I'm using the reddish brown mix with added Paints Grey Bluish and Vermilion in a thick consistency. As for the last one, I'm using the same color but this time it has a bit more Paints Grey Bluish in the mix. For the windows, I'm going to use a warm yellow, so I'm using a mix of New Gamboge with a touch of Vermilion, just like the lamppost. I first paint inside of the windows, but I want to extend the color further outwards to create a glowy effect. For some of the windows though, I'm going to use a thin consistency of Paints Grey Bluish first, and this time I'm not going to extend the color, I want to keep the color as close to the edges as I can. For these darker ones, it'll just look like the lights are off in those particular parts of the building. But personally, after completing this painting, I feel like I need to be mindful of the contrast between the color of the building and the color of the windows, which unfortunately I didn't pay attention to well enough for this painting. But anyway, let's move on to the vegetation. Here I'm using the same green mixture as the door from New Gamboge and Paints Grey Bluish to paint some of the bushes. And just like the trees, I'm just tapping using the tip of my brush in a dry brush load. Here I decided to darken some areas to add a bit more depth. I want the card to stand out so I'm going to use a deep bright red color from a mix of vermilion and a little bit of paints grey bluish to deepen the color. Then later for the windows I'm just going to use a thin consistency of graphite grey. Next I'm going to add textures to the building. Firstly I'm using the previous car mixture with added new gamboge to turn this into an orangey color and here I flatten the tip of my small brush so I'm essentially turning this into a very small flat brush which I use to paint the bricks as horizontal lines while leaving a little bit of space for the joints. For this next building, I used the same color as the car but in a thin consistency and I just placed on some random dashed lines and using a slightly thicker consistency, I'm going to paint on some lines underneath some of the detailing and also to paint on the texture of the roof. 
By the way, if you would like to use mixed media, you can also add on textures using colored pencils as well. The combination of colored pencils and watercolors will work really great for this type of composition, which will just add to the whimsical feel. Moving on to the building in the middle, I used the grayish mixture from Graphite Gray and Paints Gray Bluish and this time I'm using a dry brush load so the lines that I create can be much thinner and lighter. I'm also going to add some brick textures to the chimney, so I'm just going to use the same color and method as the bottom part of the building. Now using the same color of the bricks, but in a very thin consistency, I'm going to deepen some areas like the parts under the roof. I'm also going to do this to the other buildings as well. And I'm just basically trying to create a darker version of the base color to use it as shadows. With a slightly thicker consistency of the same color, I'm also going to place on some smaller, looser brick texture to the exterior. Here I want to further increase the contrast, so I'm using the grayish mixture in a medium consistency. Then I try to soften the edges slightly using a clean damp brush. I'm also going to apply this to the building on the right. Now let's move on to the building on the left. For the roof texture, I use a mix of paints gray, bluish, vermilion, and graphite gray to create this really muted dark brown. And I tap the tip of my brush horizontally, creating random horizontal textures. Then I'm going to use a clean damp brush to tap the color further, extending it and also leaving out some negative space. I'm picking out the same color mixture but this time it has more vermilion and I'm going to use this to paint underneath the roof as shadows and also to separate those two areas. Then I'm going to follow it up with a slightly thicker consistency while the surface is still a bit damp. After looking at the composition again, I felt like the yellows of the windows and the light looks kind of faded, so I'm just going to go over them again using the same mix of New Gamboge and Vermilion. For the dark windows, I'm using the dark brown mix with added paints grey bluish. I'm painting per section of the windows, leaving a little bit of negative space for the frames. Now that I'm looking back at this painting, you can see a nicer contrast between the dark blue and the light colored building. So if you're going to paint this, I would suggest for you to take into consideration. Here I'm also going to separate the buildings further by lining the edges using a slightly thicker consistency of the reddish brown for cleaner edges. Don't forget to redefine the chimneys also, I'm just using the darker brown again to add on a bit of textures and separating some of those sections. Next I'm going to paint the snow textures on the roof using bleed proof white and I also switched to my small brush here to make the application much easier. I still have the bleed proof white, I'm also going to use it to add a bit more detail by lining certain areas of the roof. I'm also going to use the bleed proof white to paint the window frames because I feel like this looks great if the exterior is nice and dark. If you want though, you can also switch it up by using dark browns or dark greens, especially for the lighter exterior for a bit more contrast. After adding on the white, I feel like I flattened some of the details, so I'm going to use the darker values again to separate certain parts. <laughs> 
I think I'm fairly happy with the buildings, so I'm going to get to the smaller details in the foreground. Here I'm using a light load of paints grey, bluish and graphite grey to paint on some branches. As I get to the stem of the tree though, I want to thicken it so I use a slightly heavier load. I want to add some dried leaves so I use the reddish brown that I already had on my palette and I'm just going to dot some of the edges of the branches. For most of the added details, I'm basically just going to use the same grey mixture from Paints Grey, Bluish and Graphite Grey. I just played a bit with the consistency. So for some of the details closer to the foreground, I use a thicker consistency. And as for the trees and branches in the background, I use a thinner consistency. For the fence, I'm going to use a dark brown and it's just the same grey mixture but with added new gamboge and vermilion. To neutralize the grey again, I added more paints grey bluish and I'm using a thin consistency then applying it unevenly especially around the edges. For the tires, I used the same grey mix and I'm leaving a little bit of the lighter base colour in the middle of the circles. Here I'm just adding a bit of details to the car. I don't really know how to paint cars so I just try to kind of imagine shapes and separating the elements again using bleed proof white and also some of the grey mixtures for the door. Since the snowy area looks kind of empty, I'm going to add a bit of texture from some dried plants using a greyish green mix. So this has new gamboge, paints grey, bluish and a little bit of the grey mixture. Lastly, I'm just going to add some finishing touches by cleaning out certain edges or adding a slightly darker value and lining certain areas and adding extra textures here and there to balance out everything. And as for a final touch up, to the composition, I decided to also add some old Christmas decorations for the tall building in the middle to incorporate a bit of a brighter color. I use the new gamboge and paints grey bluish mix for the green. And then I clear out some areas using bleed proof white as a white base so I can use a bright thick consistency of vermilion for those decorations. Lastly, I'm going to redefine some of the textures on the exterior of the buildings. This time I'm using a thicker consistency just so it's much more visible now that everything is painted and I can see that a thicker consistency wouldn't really bother the composition. And that's basically it. You can add some final adjustments to finish everything off. I hope you guys enjoyed this simple painting to the start of the year. Wishing you all a happy new year ahead. If you guys enjoyed this video and would like to see more tutorials by me, feel free to subscribe. And like usual, the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye!